Welcome to today's webinar titled Improved Methods for CRISPR HDR Research Using Alt-R Modified Donors and Alt-R HDR Enhancer V2. This webinar is part of the fourth annual CRISPR virtual event. I am Antonina Salcido of LabRoots and I will be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and sponsored by IDT. For more information about IDT, please go to www.idtdna.com forward slash CRISPR. Now let's get started. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to first participate by communicating with other attendees using our new live chat feature during the presentation. You can find this live chat located at the right of your screen. You can also participate by submitting as many questions as you would like during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You will notice that the speaker has provided a survey located to the right of the abstract. This survey will be available during both the live session and the on-demand period. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the Help Desk button located at the bottom of your screen within the navigation bar or from the lobby. Finally, as a reminder, this presentation is educational and offers free continuing education credits. Click on the Continuing Education Credits link located in the abstract window below the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. I now present today's speaker, Jessica Woodley, research scientist at the Molecular Genetics Research Group at IDT. For a complete biography on our speaker, please visit the Biography tab at the left of your screen. Jessica, you may now begin your presentation. Hello, uh, my name is Jessica Woodley, and I'm a research scientist in the CRISPR R&D group at IDT. And today I'll be walking you through some of the work that we've been doing to improve and streamline the HDR design process and some of our newer products designed to improve HDR rates, including our modified donors and small molecule enhancers, such as our uh, newly released Altar HDR Enhancer V2. All right, so here's our obligatory uh, DNA repair pathway slide. Um, so after you've used your CRISPR re uh, reagents, uh, be they Cas9 or Cas12A, um, to generate your double-stranded break. Uh, if no uh, donor template is provided, uh, that double-stranded break will be repaired through the non-homologous end joining pathway. And so this predominant pathway uh, results in the formation of imprecise indels. And as I'm sure most of you are aware, that's very useful for generating knockouts in genomic uh, screens. Uh, however, if we provide a, a DNA template uh, with our desired edits, um, for short edits, you can use uh, single-stranded oligos, or for larger edits, you can use long single-stranded or double-stranded DNA. Uh, you can then generate specific mutations or insertions through the HDR or homology-directed repair pathway. And uh, this is useful for changing alleles, either to mimic or correct a disease, or for generating gene fusions. And as I'm sure most of you are aware, uh, HDR rates can be challenging in certain systems. Um, and so with that in mind, we set out uh, to look for ways that we could improve HDR efficiency. And so the first portion of my talk will be focusing on uh, improvements through the design of the donor template. Uh, and uh, that also incorporates selection of appropriate uh, CRISPR reagents, uh, so looking for high activity guides, uh, and then also looking at how, at how that uh, uh, cleavage site of the Cas9 guide uh, is placed relative to your desired edit. Um, and also looking into, with your donor templates, uh, the use of optimal blocking mutations to prevent uh, Cas9 recutting after HDR, and then also looking at homo optimal homology arm length. Uh, the second portion of my talk will focus on how using improved HDR reagents can enhance uh, HDR. And so uh, I'll have a portion of my talk that focuses on using small molecules to mo modulate repair pathways, and then uh, a section looking at our current uh, and future uh, products uh, where we've added modifications into repair templates for improved stability and better HDR. And we're very excited to talk about those. All right, so uh, we do have a full workflow for uh, CRISPR research at IDT. 
going all the way from experimental design through analysis. Uh, and I'm not going to cover all of this, uh, but uh, in my talk, I will be uh, discussing our HDR design tool, which has a friendly UI and uh, provides optimal uh, donor templates uh, based on empirically defined design rules. Uh, and that is fully integrated with our Cas9 uh, guide RNA design tool as well. Um, we also have a full suite of uh, guide RNAs and CRISPR proteins available. Uh, I won't be focusing specifically on those, uh, but uh, for our HDR reagents, I will be covering um, our donor templates. And so uh, for short edits, we have our Altar HDR donor oligos that are available up to 200 bases. And those are modified uh, single-stranded oligos uh, based on our ultramer chemistry. Uh, the, uh, for longer uh, templates, we offer currently our Megamer long single-stranded DNAs up to 2,000 bases. Uh, but we are very excited uh, that we'll be releasing our Altar HDR donor blocks, um, which are modified linear double-stranded DNAs that are up to 3,000 base pairs. Uh, and those modifications are designed to uh, increase HDR and also reduce uh, potential off-target uh, effects. Um, and so those will be available uh, later this year or early next year. Um, and the final product that I'll be highlighting is our uh, small molecule uh, HDR enhancers. Um, and actually that should be updated. Our version two just launched this month. Um, so. All right, so now getting into the data. Uh, the first step in designing any HDR experiment is guide selection, and there are three uh, big factors to consider for that. Uh, the first is the position of the cleavage site. Uh, generally, you want to be uh, as close to the HDR insertion as possible. Uh, the second point is guide efficiency, and generally, you need to have high efficiency to mediate high levels of HDR. Um, and if you are using a poor efficiency guide that's really going to uh, impact negatively uh, your potential HDR rates. Uh, and the last factor to keep in mind is the risk for off-target effects. And so we recommend using a guide with a good specificity score, um, either using our guide RNA tool or others available uh, to predict off-targets. Um, and that'll just help reduce any potential off-target activity. Um, and so in the next couple slides, uh, I'll be uh, showing a case study to highlight the importance of this second point, looking for guide efficiency, um, and actually confirming your guide efficiency prior to HDR experiments. So uh, in this uh, experiment, we are targeting a six base pair insert uh, to the GAP-DH gene uh, right before the staph codon. Uh, and so we're considering a number of factors here. Again, uh, the position of that cleavage site relative to the HDR edit. Uh, shown here are uh, a number of guides that cut between 2 to 14 base pairs away. Uh, we did test further out as well. Uh, and then uh, the other factor that we're considering here is guide efficiency. Um, and so if we look at the actual HDR rates uh, for a number of these guides targeting this locus, what we found is that the two closest guides uh, here that cut 2 and 5 base pairs away uh, actually turned out to have very poor uh, total editing, uh, which you can see here measured by T7E1. Um, and so because of that low overall uh, editing efficiency with these two guides, you can see that the HDR rates are correspondingly uh, limited. Uh, and actually, the best guide that we found to work at this site, it cuts uh, six pace bears downstream uh, from our target insert site. And you can see we can get HDR rates uh, up to 50% as measured by EcoR1 uh, cleavage. Uh, and what we found surprising is actually the second best guide uh, cuts 14 base pairs away um, upstream. Uh, and again, that's a high efficiency guide. And so we were able to get uh, higher rates of HDR. So this is an extreme case where the editing rates are lower, but it does highlight an important uh, step of confirming your editing efficiency with your guides prior to HDR experiments. All right, uh, so the introduction of blocking mutations into the HDR donor is particularly useful when the HDR edit does not disrupt Cas9 recognition. And so for building out our Altar HDR design tool, 
we set out to build a, an empirically defined rule set um, to base our recommendations on. And so I'm highlighting here a sample experiment from that testing. Uh, and so for this experiment, we were introducing a SNP adjacent to the PAM, um, where the HDR event is susceptible to further editing by Cas9. And then we assessed whether a single blocking mutation uh, was sufficient to prevent Cas9 recutting and give us perfect HDR. Uh, and <clears throat> to do that, we mutated each position within the PAM and within the guide seed region to every other possible base. Um, and as you can see, we tested this in uh, two cell lines and at two different sites. And the results here are plotted as a heat map. Um, and what we found is that uh, introducing blocking mutations within the G positions of the PAM or neither the, the three prime end of the guide uh, brought our HDR rates uh, up from around 1% as a baseline up to 10 to 20% HDR. Um, and we also found that no base was universally preferred over others. And as I indicated, we did do further testing looking at combinations of mutations as well, uh, but that all was built into the uh, rule set for our design tool. And up in the upper right, you can see after developing this rule set, we then did check uh, the tool's model for uh, blocking mutations with a variety of edits including uh, various size insertions at different sites, as well as SNPs and deletions. Uh, and aside from one data point, um, you can see that the HDR rates benefited from the addition of these silent mutations from our design tool. All right, uh, so now on the next few slides, I'll be running through uh, the design process with our HDR design tool. Uh, and on this first menu, uh, you'll be selecting your target. And there is a very flexible input format uh, that includes either selecting a gene or genomic coordinates for uh, common genomes, including human, mouse, rat, C. elegans, and zebrafish. Uh, and if you're using one of these common genomes, it does allow you to select an NCBI transcript. Uh, and so that will automatically upload coding information uh, for incorporating silent mutations in the subsequent menus. Um, if you're working in other species or using batch designs, uh, we also offer a FASTA input. Um, and further down on the menu, uh, you can also enter in the edit location uh, if you know exactly where you want to do your edit. Uh, and uh, you can enter in guide information as well if you've already confirmed those elements. Um, otherwise, they can be selected on the interactive interface later. All right, uh, so on the second menu here, uh, after you've picked your targets, um, you can then select your specific HDR edit. And so if you ed entered in uh, the coordinates for your HDR edit, it will automatically zoom in. Otherwise, you can use these blue sliders here uh, to select the uh, specific location that you want to introduce a sequence or, or a mutation. And so uh, if you want to generate a SNP or a deletion, you can select uh, the basis that you want to edit and then enter in the replacement down below here on the mutation bar. Um, otherwise, you can uh, put, uh, push these two sliders together, um, and any sequence that you enter in the mutation bar will be entered in as a in, uh, direct insert uh, wherever those blue slider, sliders are set. Um, and you can see uh, on the little map, uh, if you have entered in your NCBI transcript, it does give you the translation of the gene down below. Uh, and above, you can see that it is entered in that HDR edit that we have typed in. Um, uh, additionally, you can select uh, specific homology arm lengths. Uh, we do have defaults of 40 for short edits and uh, 200 for larger edits. Uh, and down below, you can also select whether you want the tool to automatically incorporate blocking mutations. All right, uh, so this is what the design output looks like uh, from the tool. And so in this particular example, uh, we're showing two different outputs. Uh, on the top, you can see it is the output without any blocking mutations incorporated. And so you can see the guide RNA that we've selected is shown uh, down below, as well as the cut site is indicated. Uh, the HDR edit is highlighted in uh, green. Uh, and uh, you can see the translations down below, so we can confirm that's correct as well. Um, and in the second panel down below, you can see uh, 
indicated where those two specific blocking mutations are. Um, and on the right, we do have uh, some HDR data here uh, looking for that per perfect HDR in dark blue. And you can see that uh, those silent mutations do indeed uh, increase the HDR rate. Uh, and this tool is fully integrated with our uh, web ordering. So it will allow you to uh, order the paired guide RNA and the uh, HDR template as well. All right. Uh, so moving beyond our HDR design tool, uh, unfortunately, you may run into a situation uh, where guide availability is limited uh, in your sequence of interest. And as most of you are likely aware, HDR efficiency does really drop off after you get beyond uh, 10 or 15 base pairs away from the uh, HDR edit uh, and cut site. And so uh, an example of that is just shown here where we've walked uh, the HDR insert position uh, for a six base insert. Um, and so we asked, uh, how can we improve the HDR rates uh, in these cases where you're cutting uh, over uh, 15 base pairs away from the cut site? And so one important factor that we have found with these types of edits uh, is strand selection. And so when you're using a single-stranded oligo, uh, like in these experiments, we have typically found uh, that uh, HDR edits that are near the cut site don't have any generalized uh, strand preference. So we empirically determine uh, whether the non-targeting or targeting strand would be preferred. Um, however, uh, in this case, uh, we're introducing, uh, again, a six base insert, uh, 20 base pairs uh, PAM distal or PAM proximal uh, relative to our guide sequence. Um, and in these cases, uh, for these two sites tested here that were pulled from a larger testing set for simplicity, you can see that uh, PAM distal edits have a very strong preference for the non-targeting strand, uh, while the edits that are placed PAM proximal have a very strong preference for the targeting strand. Um, so if you're using single-stranded uh, oligos, uh, and editing far away from your Cas9 cleavage site, uh, this is an important factor to keep in mind. Uh, the, we then further investigated whether or not there were any preferences for uh, the placement of silent blocking mutations for these types of HDR edits. And so again, uh, in this experiment, we were inser inserting a six base sequence, uh, in this case, 25 base pairs away from the cut site and uh, looking that at, at that at both, with both PAM distal edits uh, and with PAM proximal edits. Um, and then we tested donors that either had no further mutation, uh, included a PAM mutation, or included a repair track mutation. And so uh, we just evenly spaced out uh, SNPs between the cut site and the uh, HDR insert. Um, and so what we found, uh, if we look at the preferred strand in both of these cases, is that uh, mutations that are placed on the same side of the double-stranded break as the HDR edit were preferred. And so that particularly comes into play with that PAM distal edit. So if we look at the uh, HDR rates by NGS, you can see that we don't have any perfect HDR uh, when no extra mutation is incorporated. Uh, the PAM mutation does bring that up to about 4% uh, on the PAM distal side um, at the three low side we tested this at. Um, however, if we then included those repair track mutations uh, where those SNPs were placed on the same side of the double strand of break as our HDR edit, you can see we're bringing that up to about 13%. Um, in the case of the PAM proximal mutations, um, there wasn't any really further benefit to the repair track mutations over the PAM mutation, since that's all on the same side of the double-stranded break uh, as the HDR edit. All right, uh, so now moving on beyond the improved designs, uh, the next portion of the talk will focus on improved reagents. And so we'll start out first uh, discussing our small molecules to modulate repair pathways. Uh, and then focus in on the uh, modified um, donor oligos and donor blocks um, for improved HDR. So uh, for the small molecule enhancers, um, our 
Altar HDR Enhancer V2 has really been a game-changing improvement for us uh, for HDR rates. So after launching our original HDR Enhancer, uh, which is shown here in light orange, which gives about a four-fold increase in HDR uh, in this experiment, uh, we found that uh, it was better than the majority of the compounds that were published in the literature. And you can show or see some of our screening results here. Uh, and what we found when we looked at uh, compounds from the literature is that the majority of them really didn't have a strong impact on our HDR rates. Um, uh, however, after we launched our original HDR enhancer, uh, we did continue evaluating new compounds and our uh, best new solution uh, that offers improved HDR is shown here in dark orange, which is our recently launched Altar HDR Enhancer V2. And you can see here that we're getting HRAs up to 80% for this six phase insert in jerkat cells. Um, and in addition to uh, better HDR efficiency, uh, the V2 enhancer can also be delivered at a lower dose. Uh, and so that allows for better cell viability as well. Okay, uh, and on this slide, I'm just showing uh, various uh, small edits that we've made uh, in varying human cell lines, as well as varying mouse cell lines. Uh, and you can see across the board that we get increased HDR uh, when using either our uh, version one or version two enhancers, uh, but that the uh, version two offers the best HDR around. Um, and uh, I don't have the data shown here, uh, but we've also shown that it works well for improving Castle Bay HDR as well. All right, uh, so now moving into modified templates uh, for uh, repair template sequences that are less than 200 bases. Um, our HDR design tool will automatically design Altar HDR donor oligos. Um, and so again, these uh, short oligos are based on our top quality ultramers. Uh, and these include additional modifications that help boost HDR. And so uh, this modification pattern was uh, the result of extensive testing uh, with oligos to identify a, a top modification pattern to improve HDRs. And so here you can see um, is a summary of our testing. And so this was tested at multiple sites and in multiple human and mouse cell lines. And you can see uh, we get about a seven-fold improvement um, on average over an unmodified uh, oligo. And uh, we're also highlighting here um, that phosphorothiolate modified donors, uh, which have been published in the literature, give about a four-fold uh, increase in HDR relative to the unmodified. So uh, the increased stability that you get uh, in cells with the donor also is beneficial for uh, improved HDR as well. Um, and on this slide is just a little bit more uh, direct comparison uh, at individual sites in our human jerkat cell line and in the mouse cell line H3612J. Uh, and again, uh, this is a, a short six base insert that's being generated in each of these cases. And you can see uh, if we look at the unmodified donor, we're starting at about one to 2% uh, HDR in these challenging systems. Um, we do get a decent boost to the HDR rates when using those phosphorothiolate modified donors, but we get uh, much better HDR with the Altar modified uh, donor oligos as well. All right, now finally uh, for this section, um, I do want to highlight that the combined use of the Altar HDR donor oligos and the Altar HDR Enhancer V2 offers an improved solution uh, for generating those small HDR edits, particularly when you're in a challenging system and starting off at one or 2% HDR. And so uh, just starting with our baseline of unmodified, untreated uh, uh, reagents, uh, you can see in the dark blue that we're starting between one to 10% HDR. Um, and if we add the uh, HDR Enhancer V2, we do get a nice uh, boost to the HDR rates. And as we add further modifications to the donors, you can see, again, we're getting a nice boost to the HDR rates. Uh, and with our combined approach, you can see we're getting above 40% uh, HDR in all of these cases. All right. Uh, so now shifting gears to discuss larger knock-ins uh, and go over some work from a, 
uh, the development of one of our upcoming products. Um, when we considered potential repair templates for larger knock-ins, uh, one of the easiest to produce is plasmid uh, DNA. Uh, however, we found uh, in our testing that the HDR efficiency is limited when using plasmid, uh, and that's because it can have higher toxicity with your cells, which limits, uh, limits the effective dose that you can deliver. Um, and so for uh, many years now, we've offered our Megamer long single strain of DNA product. Uh, and this works well for HDR uh, and uh, is pretty well tolerated by cells. Uh, however, it is a fairly complicated uh, manufacturing process. And so uh, it does have a higher cost in turnaround time. Um, and so this has uh, generally worked well for uh, my Microinjection work. Uh, the yields that are generated are sufficient for that. However, it's not really a cost-effective cost-effective solution for cell work. Um, and so we started looking into alternatives and turned to linear double-stranded DNA. Um, and generally, linear double-stranded DNA we found does work well for HDR um, and has similar toxicity uh, to cells uh, as long single-stranded DNA. Um, However, its main drawback is the risk of off-target uh, integration, which I'll get into on the next slide. Um, and so we decided based on reports in the literature to see if we could incorporate modifications into the linear double-stranded DNA uh, to help mitigate this risk and promote HDR. All right, uh, so when we're uh, referring to this off-target risk, uh, what that really comes down to is homology-independent integration with the, the linear double-stranded DNA. And so uh, after the double-stranded DNA is uh, generated, ideally when you introduce your long template, uh, you'll get a nice clean repair through HDR. However, the linear double-stranded DNA N can similarly be recognized by the NHEJ repair machinery. And so you can get insertion through the NHEJ pathway. And so if you're looking at your on-target site, that can result in the duplication of one or both of your homology arms. Uh, and this can similarly happen um, at any endogenous double-stranded DNA breaks uh, or Cas9 off-target sites. And so the on-target site isn't as much of a concern since you can screen out those edits fairly easily. Um, however, those uh, integration into any off-target sites is a concern. Um, all right, so we set out to screen a wide variety of modifications uh, for the ability to prevent that off-target uh, integration. And so here I'm showing you a sample of that screening results. Uh, so generally our system involved introducing modifications into a short double-stranded DNA donor, uh, in this case uh, inserting a 42 base pair insert uh, that contained an EcoR1 restriction site. Uh, we would then deliver this donor with a Cas9 that was complexed with either the on-target guide RNA or a guide RNA targeting uh, another locus, uh, which gave us an opportunity to, to artificially look at um, off-target double-stranded DNA breaks. So after editing, we would then amplify up these target sites uh, and assess insertion using uh, EcoR1 digestion. And then based on the sizes of the digestion products, we could uh, determine whether it was HDR um, or a blunt insertion. And so in general, we selected modifications such as G, uh, shown here, where we got an increase in the HDR rates, as well as a decrease in the blunt insertion rates uh, at both the on and off target uh, sites. All right, uh, so after we had done all of our screening, uh, we then set out to further confirm them in additional cell lines and at additional sites. And the summary of our results is shown here. Uh, and so when we were testing with these shorter sequences, uh, we found that our top modification pattern, uh, labeled here as the Alt-R uh, mod, uh, offered improved uh, ratios of HDR to blunt insertion at the on-target site uh, up to fourfold. Uh, all right, so once we had identified our modification, uh, we then set out to look at how it behaved with large knock-ins relative to alternative templates. And so here we're comparing uh, long single-stranded DNA, uh, either the targeting or non-targeting strands, uh, relative to an unmodified double-stranded DNA or our Altar modified double-stranded DNA. And you can see uh, when we target a GFP insert 
three different loci uh, in two different cell lines. Uh, you can see our baseline HDR rate with the long single stranded DNAs uh, was less than 5%. Uh, if we delivered an equal molar dose of the unmodified double stranded DNA, you can see that gets us up to about 10%. Um, and uh, if we then used our ultra modified double stranded DNA, that brought us up to about 15% HDR. So we're seeing improved rates. Um, and if we then introduced our alter HDR enhancer V2, what we found uh, uh, was very pleasing uh, that the treatment of the V2 enhancer works very well with linear double-stranded DNA. Uh, and so you can see that the V2 brings the single-stranded DNA templates up to 10 to 20% HDR. Uh, however, uh, we get up to 50 to 70% uh, HDR with the uh, V2 enhancer and the HDR donor blocks. Um, and if we use long read sequencing to further dig into the editing, what we can actually see is that the long single-stranded DNA templates uh, result in partial integration, uh, where the five prime junction uh, relative to the donor template uh, has these deletions occurring. Uh, and we do not see that with the double-stranded DNA template. All right, uh, on this slide, uh, we're looking further into that uh, off-target risk. And so, again, we have four different uh, templates for GFP knock-ins. Um, and we're introducing that with a mock off-target uh, double-stranded break uh, with an RNP targeting the serpent C1 locus. Uh, and so what we see is uh, when we deliver the unmodified templates uh, with this off-target RNP, we get up to uh, about 23% uh, insertion at this off-target site. Uh, if we add our modification in, uh, we can bring that down to about 8% uh, insertion. Um, and what's nice is if we further treat with this uh, Altar HDR Enhancer V2, which should modulate the repair pathways, we can actually bring this down to about uh, background detection levels. Uh, and now this is a worst case scenario uh, where the off-target double-stranded DNA break is being generated near 100% uh, uh, efficiency. So I wouldn't expect to see this high of levels with typical Cas9 off targets. All right, uh, so the last couple of experiments that I want to highlight here are looking at improved designs with the Altar HDR donor blocks. Uh, so on this first slide, we're looking at the impact of homology arm length with varying size inserts. Uh, and so we have uh, insertion sizes ranging from 120 base pairs up to 2 kb, uh, targeting different sites, and tested homology arm lengths uh, from 40 up to 300 base pairs for the shorter sizes, and then 40 up to 500 base pairs for the longer inserts. Uh, and these were delivered as both equal molar doses, uh, where the differences are a little bit more exaggerated, as well as equal mass. Uh, and we actually looked at equal mass a little bit more uh, since we found that cells are limited on the total mass that can be delivered before uh, you're significantly impacting cell viability. Uh, and so uh, you can actually increase the HDR rates a little bit more for those shorter uh, homology arms. Uh, but overall, what you can see is that uh, the HDR rate begins plateauing around uh, 100 to 200 base pairs. Um, for the homology arm length for the shorter inserts. Uh, and then it begins plateauing around 200 to 300 base pairs uh, for the longer uh, inserts. And so generally we recommend starting out at 200 base pairs uh, as a default starting uh, point for your homology arm length. Uh, but this may vary by cell type or system. All right, and so the last little bit of data I have here is looking at improvements uh, in the design of blocking mutation with larger inserts. And this is very similar to the results that we uh, observed with our single-stranded algos, um, where if you're generating a 300 base pair insert, um, uh, 20 base pairs upstream or downstream of your cut site, um, generally we found that uh, including blocking mutations that are on the same side of your double-stranded break as your insert uh, is actually the best design. And so again, with the PAM distal design, uh, we recommend uh, using those track mutations. Um, 
and then uh, with the PAM distal mutation or the PAM proximal mutations, excuse me, um, a PAM mutation alone is sufficient. All right, uh, so uh, overall, we do recommend uh, careful consideration of your donor template design um, and the selection of your guide RNA to improve your HDR rates uh, from that aspect. And our Altar HDR design tool uh, is an easy way to uh, generate those blocking mutations and uh, look for potential guide RNAs. Um, and we also recommend the use of our Altar HDR Enhancer V2 that just launched this month. Um, and that's been a game-changing way to uh, improve our HDR rates. Um, and then finally, the inclusion of modifications in your donor templates uh, does allow you to stabilize those donors and cells and promote your uh, HDR rates. So uh, in conclusion, um, oops. Uh, I do want to uh, acknowledge our team, uh, including our full uh, CRISPR R&D group, as well as our bioinformatics scientists that support us in all of our endeavors. Um, our products and tools can be found on the HDR and CRISPR websites uh, listed here. I'm happy to take any questions, uh, and any additional inquiries can be sent to our CRISPR at idtdna.com email. All right.